It's amazing how quickly things can be forgotten when there's no longer anyone around with first-hand knowledge to talk about them. You might know about the lives of your grandparents, but how much do you know about their grandparents? Do you know the circumstances of your family 200 years before you were born? If the answer is no, how can we ever hope to fully understand the mysteries of the distant past? Is the St. Bellic Slab the oldest map in Europe? It's a hugely controversial assessment of the ancient artifact, but it might be accurate. The slab was first found in France in the year 1900, but was thought to be insignificant and was even lost for more than a century before eventually being rediscovered and examined more closely. It's that recent examination that's led to the idea that the Bronze Age artifact might be more than it appears to be. The slab is covered with inscriptions and markings that were previously thought to be symbolic, but experts now believe it's an accurate topographical representation of the River Odette and the area that surrounds it. If that's true, it's an incredible accomplishment considering the people who made it lived around 4,100 years ago. If we interpret the slab as a map, we can probably view it as an indication of the territory held by a king or a leader all that time ago. The fact that the slab was intentionally burned, broken, and then buried could, therefore, represent the conquering of the territory by another entity. That's all conjecture, though. The idea that this is Europe's oldest map is quickly becoming accepted as fact. In November 2016, archaeologists working at a site close to the village of langrelay sur rance in Brittany, France, were rewarded for their efforts with the discovery of an enormous Gallo-Roman villa. The villa comprises several buildings arranged in a U-shape around a courtyard, surrounded by colonnaded galleries. The courtyard alone covers more than 16,000 square feet. The location for the villa, which dates to the first century, was probably chosen because of the stunning view of the Rance River that it offered. Archaeological evidence at the site suggests the property was expanded several times after it was built and remained in use until the 4th century. Perhaps the most impressive of the remaining structures at the villa is the bath complex, which covers more than 4,300 square feet and includes a warm pool, a cold pool, a foot bath, and a caldarium, complete with a sauna and a hot tub. Whoever lived here must have been fabulously wealthy but no identifying materials were found at the site. Historians have concluded that they were a noble family of the Curiosolitae people, but that really isn't telling us much. Our next puzzling find comes from the ancient Egyptian city of Abydos. In November 2016, archaeologists located the site of a mud-brick boat chamber that appears to have served as the place of burial for a king's funeral boat around 3,800 years ago. The boat was the only real water vessel in the burial chamber, but for some reason it was accompanied by drawings of a whole fleet of similar boats all over the walls, 120 of them in total. It's likely that the boat belongs to a king from the 12th dynasty era known as Senwerset III, on account of the fact his tomb has been located nearby. The site could have been found a lot earlier. The British archaeologist Arthur Weigall spotted something unusual here in 1902 and started digging, but the roof collapsed as his team was working on excavating the chamber, so they gave up and left it alone. Boats like this were expected to animate in the afterlife and carry the deceased ruler on their voyage through eternity, although to find one surrounded by so many drawings is unique. We don't know what this boat did to merit such special treatment. As technology improves, we're capable of opening or looking into ancient artifacts without touching or unwrapping them. One of those artifacts is a badly burned scroll that was found in the town of En Gedi in Israel in 1970. The town burned to the ground in the early 7th century, thus explaining the state of the scroll, which was found in the Holy Ark of the town synagogue. It was already old by the time of the fire, having been written in either the 4th or 5th century. Using a program developed by Professor Brent Seals and his team at the University of Kentucky in the USA, the scroll was scanned and digitally unwrapped in September 2016. The contents are the first eight verses of the Book of Leviticus. 
As such, the En Gedi scroll is now officially the oldest book from the Torah found since the world-famous discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's also the world's only example of a Pentateuchal book being found inside a holy ark. The technology is now being used on other delicate ancient documents, including scrolls found in Pompeii and Herculaneum. The ancient fort of Vindolanda in England is the richest source of ancient Roman discoveries in England. Hundreds of discoveries are made there every year, but the discovery of a single leather shoe in September 2016 attracted more attention than most other finds that year. It's because of how modern the shoe looks. It's made in a style that reminds some people of the famous Adidas Predator football boot, which was made famous during the 1990s by players like Zinedine Zidane and David Beckham. Archaeologists found the striking shoe in the Severin Ditch at the fort and think it's been there since the year 212. For unknown reasons, some 400 shoes were thrown into the ditch that year. Perhaps the Romans were having a clear out. Considering the incredible age of the shoe, it's in astonishingly good condition with only one small tear close to the seam of the heel. That makes it odd that the shoe was thrown away, as the tear would have been easy to repair. Having said that, it's possible the shoe's owner simply grew out of it. Based on its size, they could have been no more than 10 years old. When it's been snowing outside and the ground under your feet is treacherous, it makes sense to wear snowshoes. That's a common piece of wisdom that's been with us for thousands of years. Although the type of snowshoe people wore back then doesn't look much like the snowshoes of today. This strange looking artifact, discovered by Gurgler Elsjok Glacier close to the Italian Austrian border in 2016, is thought to be the oldest snowshoe in the world. Carbon dating tests carried out on the birch and twine that it's made from dates it to the late Neolithic era of 5,800 years ago. It's only survived for this long because it's been hidden away 10,000 feet above sea level in conditions that preserved it almost perfectly. The frozen remains of the mummified Neolithic hunter known as Oetzi were found nearby 25 years earlier, although it can't be proven that this was his shoe. The discovery is proof that the people of the era lived in the snowy Alps despite the harsh conditions and understood how to dress for survival in the harsh terrain. Golden treasures are the best type of archaeological discovery in the eyes of a lot of people. So let's check out a golden discovery from the Indonesian island of Java. It's a collection of 22 small gold plates, each inscribed with religious symbols. The plates were found together in a stone box, not far from an ancient Buddhist temple. Expert archaeologists, who were called to the scene in Ringan Larik village after the discovery was made accidentally by construction workers building a water aquifer, think they were made during the 8th century. Each of the plates is 18 karat gold, and the symbols are mostly dedicated to the Diwa Lokapala, who were the wind gods of the Javanese Hindu-based religion. The Central Java Heritage Conservation Agency took ownership of the artifacts after they were discovered in September 2016, but ensured that a finder's fee was paid to the construction workers and also to the owner of the land the discovery was made on. Given the placement of the plates inside a decorative box, it's likely that they were buried in the ground as a blessing or an offering when work began on building the nearby temple. Finding an undisturbed tomb is as close to a guarantee of finding treasure as you'll ever find in the world of archaeology. That proved to be the case yet again in Cyprus in 2016, when archaeologists from Sweden's University of Gothenburg opened a Bronze Age tomb in the city of Hala Sultan Teke, becoming the first people to see inside it for 3,200 years. There, they found more than 100 mostly intact ceramic vessels, along with gold beads, earrings, and scarabs that appear to be of Egyptian origin and design. The tomb is unusually large and appears to have been built for a family of nine adults and eight children. Aside from the ceramics and jewelry, there were gemstones, cylinder seals from as far away as Syria and Mesopotamia, and one bronze dagger. As valuable as the items made from precious materials are, 
Archaeologists are just as fascinated by the elaborately decorated ceramics, which feature detailed illustrations. One vase in particular, which bears the image of a woman in a dress, has been taken as an example of the clothing worn by the richest women of the era. Great discoveries aren't always about monetary value. Historical value is just as important. Have you ever given any thought to what the oldest gold artifact in the world is? Whether you have or you haven't, we're about to answer the question for you. If scientists and historians are correct, it's this tiny gold bead that was found at a prehistoric archaeological site outside the small town of Pazadzik in southern Bulgaria in August 2016. It's nothing more than a tiny strip of gold wrapped into the shape of a ring and weighs 15 centigrams. That's five thousandths of an ounce. Scientific analysis of the ring indicates that it's 6,600 years old. Until the discovery of the ring, the oldest confirmed gold discovery in the world also came from Bulgaria and came from a necropolis in Varna, where more than 3,000 artifacts were discovered, including gold artifacts made 6,200 years ago. The site of the Pazodric discovery is thought to have been founded by the descendants of the Anatolians, who traveled from Asia Minor to Europe 9,000 years ago and developed the world's first metal processing centers. Historians call it the Town of Birds because of all the ancient bird figurines that have been found at the site. But perhaps it should be called the Town of Gold instead. Most people nowadays don't believe in magic, but just a few centuries ago, people believed wholeheartedly in the power of magic spells. These tiny inscriptions engraved onto bits of gold and silver foil and then buried with the deceased in Kostolok, Serbia, show that belief in the power of blessings and curses was far more common in these lands 2,000 years ago. The inscriptions are written in Aramaic, but it looks to be encoded. That's why, since the scrolls were unearthed in 2015, Specialists have been struggling to translate the text. Archaeologists discovered them while inspecting a plot of ground set aside for the development of a new power station on land that was previously part of the ancient Roman city of Viminacium. It turns out that the land had previously been used as a burial place, and that everyone buried there was given a lead amulet carrying a little scroll. The names of known demons that have been identified in the text give rise to the possibility that they are magic scrolls. It's unclear why the dead would require the services of a demon, though. Let's talk about a mysterious discovery of the skeletal kind. Why were a group of people buried while shackled together on the outskirts of Athens and Greece around 2,600 years ago? The first instinct of archaeologists is that they may have been slaves, but why keep slaves shackled together when burying them? The latest theory about the 80 skeletons that were found in a mass grave in April 2016 is that the people buried here might have been followers of Cylon, who led an unsuccessful rebellion and failed to seize the Acropolis in the year 632 BCE. His supporters would have been punished severely after the failed coup. There are at least 1,500 people buried in the immediate vicinity, which supports the idea that Cylon's followers were rounded up and brought here to be buried. They might even still have been alive when it happened. Cylon himself managed to escape from Athens, leaving his followers behind to suffer. Historical sources suggest that an initial promise was made to allow his supporters to live, but the promise was broken, and most of them paid with their lives. The wreck of the Swedish royal ship Kronen was first discovered in 1980, but it's such a large and complex site that objects from within the wreckage are still being pulled up to the surface to this day. The discovery from July 2016 might not be the most valuable artifact that's ever been extracted from the 17th century shipwreck, but it's definitely the smelliest. It's a small black jar full of sticky, pungent Gouda cheese. The jar was brought to the surface as part of the same mission that also retrieved a handful of gold coins and a diamond ring, and is described as having a foul aroma that clings to your clothes and takes a long time to wash off. 
The fact that cheese can survive at the bottom of the Baltic Sea for more than 340 years is incredible. But even the sea's incredible qualities of preservation can't keep everything in pristine condition. While this might look and smell like cheese, it definitely wouldn't be safe for anybody to try eating it. Although we think the stench would put anybody off the idea of trying anyway. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!